uh, fucking bitches, I ain't give a fuck, I'm tryna run up the digits, all these bitches talking, they never winning, we on the block, we just chilling, how the fuck you feeling, I'm feeling like, I gotta make it like a new way, they wanna target while you do, what the fuck would you say, if you was living in fucking poverty, I'm just tryna make it out, but what the fuck you tryna talk about, fucking bitch, shut your fucking mouth. Hi bitches, what's good? It's Janae. I'm back with another video and in today's video, it's going to be the next video in my life story series. That's the series where I tell my life in a chronological order from the time when I was youngest all the way up to current day. We last left off in sixth grade where I was sent to a mental hospital over the summer between my sixth and seventh grade year in order to continue going to my public school. So we're going to pick right back up in the beginning of seventh grade and they let me go back to my public school because I did complete the mental health program at that mental health hospital. If you missed that video, definitely go back and check the next one. A link for the playlist will be in the description. It's pretty crazy so far and the stories are only going to get crazier. Oh, I get back to my public school and it, I didn't last long. I'm just because I know what I'm going to title this video. I'm just going to say it right now. Like literally I lasted until October before they ended up just kicking me the fuck out at that school. So like you start school like the end of August. So basically I had like a week or maybe two weeks in August all of September and like half of October before they kicked me the fuck out of the district. And they're like, yeah, get the fuck out of here. I was a very bad child. I would go to my classes and fuck around, not care. I would, like, if a teacher tried to correct me on my behavior, I would just go off on the fucking teacher. Just really crazy behavior. Um, every time I'd get detention, I would never serve it. I'd end up getting, like, in schools, and then they'd end up, like, out schools suspending me. I was getting in multiple fights, so it was just a whole list of reasons, and... Yeah, they basically just kicked me the fuck out of there, and I ended up not going back to Camelot. I ended up going to a new alternative school called Clay Academy, and this school is actually part of the court system. It's part of the judicial system, so there's a lot of students there that are part of the court system that are on house arrest or have been to juvie. You can basically, if you commit a crime, they can literally sentence you to this school, so like that should explain what this school is. Is. It's a pretty bad school. It was even more strict than the previous behavioral school that I had been to. Now, this school really didn't play around, and they wanted you to know that. One of the first most notable things when you get into the school is that they have the cafeteria laid out in a certain way where there's like four main tables, and then there's these two walls, and then there's classrooms around the cafeteria, and there's various desks behind these walls and outside the classrooms, and basically just random cubicles and things that have dividers, and this is the area where they send all the bad kids. It's, it's actually insane. You talk back to a teacher in class, they'll send you to the cafeteria, and you just have to sit there for hours, and there's these two guys that sit there, these two very large black men um, Mr. Harris and Mr. Moses, and they are very large, and they have, they have professions that's, like, crazy. Like, Mr. Moses used to play, um, semi-professional football, and he actually played a preseason for the Saints. He was a offensive lineman, so really just a fucking massive dude, like, 6'4", fucking huge, like, 400 pounds, and then Mr. Harris was a semi-pro boxer, so yeah, definitely another guy that you wouldn't want to fuck with, and these guys were there to keep the kids in control, and basically also there just as intimidation to make sure that we don't try anything but of course like kids would always like try them and everything never a smart idea because they did not fuck around i've seen them both straight out like just flat out lay out kids like tackle them like pick them ass up carry them like these are some like beastly fucking men like insanely large and strong men and there was also this room in the cafeteria that was right behind where they sat, and that's called the quiet room. It's a small padded room. Think of like a solitary confinement sort of room, and it has a lock on it. You can't open the door from the inside. They lock you in there, and you can't really do shit. And there's this like little glass wall 
like a little glass window that you can see out of this room, but they cover it up all the time, so you can't even see out of there. And so if you go to the cafeteria because you weren't listening, and then you don't listen in the cafeteria, they'll throw your ass in there. And I've seen them also do like some really fucked up things. Like kids have been like talking mad shit, and they're like, "I'll oh, come in the quiet room," and you know. You know, I'll show you how fucking, you know, show me how tough you are or whatever. And, you know, they'll do whatever they have to do in there. And there's a lot of things like that that go on at the school that probably shouldn't be happening. We get treated literally like prisoners on a daily basis. The food that they sent us was the food that was left over from the public high schools like in the area. And it was like nasty. It was old. It was never fresh. Like... A lot of kids have actually gotten food poisoning just from eating this food here. So, like, this this school is probably one of the worst alternative schools I've been to. It was even worse than Camelot. It was really bad. One of the cool things about this school, though, is that you were able to go from class to class. It wasn't like most alternative schools I've been to where you stay in one class all day regardless of your grade. I was in a class that was 7th and 8th graders. They had 6th graders in elementary school when I first went there. That eventually changed. But... I had multiple different teachers, and I really liked that. I had Mr. Reason, uh, Miss Sienna, and Mr. Lewis. So it's not like, you know, you don't get the full, like, each teacher for each period, but it, you do get to change it up a little bit, which was very nice. Now, being that this class was 7th and 8th graders, there at the time, there wasn't that many 7th graders. There was a lot of 6th graders and a lot of 8th graders, but not too many 7th graders. But I did quickly you know, fit in, and I got along with a lot of kids, you know, I'm with my brand, I'm with troublemakers, I'm with class clowns, I'm with kids that, you know, fuck off and, you know, just do crazy shit, do fun shit, we played a lot of basketball, there was one kid who was very good, his name was Jimmy, and he used to fucking follow me all the time, so we used to get in a little bit of fights about that, but yeah, it was a good time, so we played basketball pretty much every day, but besides that, it was a very strict school. Like, if you get up without permission, they fucking yell at you. And if you don't listen, they'll tackle your ass. They have intimidated me multiple times. They've told me, like, they sent everybody out of class. And then they called Mr. Harris up. And my teacher and Mr. Harris got in my face. And they're like, oh, so, like, you're running your mouth a lot. Like, you think you're tough. Like, yada, yada. Like, like, oh, like, um, you want to see how fucking tough you are. Like, we could carry you downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Like, just shit that, like, you shouldn't really be saying the kids um for this honestly for th this episode I want to just like talk about how growing up in an environment like this and like constantly since you were like a young age being treated like this being treated like a fucking you know like a degenerate like being treated like a criminal like it really it really sets you up for failure. A lot of the kids that I know that grew up going to these schools with me, they're in very bad places and they struggle with multiple issues. Me too, like, we're broken. There's no way we can be normal. The way we react to certain situations and also going to these schools is what led me down the path I went down in the future that you will see. So here I am at my worst fucking school and there are plenty of stories I could tell about that, but I'm going to leave it for the next episode. So this really isn't the biggest episode. This is just an intro to Clay, basically, and just talking about how, yeah, I got fucking expelled again, you know, fucking story in my life. So next episode will be stories from Clay, and I know I said this last time, but I'm going to try to put this out quicker. I'm, the next one will be a bunch of crazy-ass stories, so definitely, like, we're getting closer and closer to high school, so y'all need to buckle up. Anyways... I fucking love y'all bitches. Peace out. Have a great day. Round get smoke. Don't come around, don't come around. You fuck around, get smoke. Uh yeah. In my city we game bang, cause it's hanging on the fucking strip. I tried to be nice, even gave your ass a fucking tip. Now I got my Glock 9, that bitch got the nicest grip. Always been 10 toes, props. I don't stumble, bitch. I won't trip. Remember back in eighth grade where I made my first fucking flip. My life real, no storyline type of shit. Make you get a grip. Where I'm from, we slide out to a fucking hit. I can fuck with stupid shit. Been style, guess I'm too legit. Yeah. Uh, community acting fucking scary. Where I come from, shit get hairy. Pop your ass like a fucking